AI in Action is brought to you by Aulis International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Our host, Mark Kelly, brings you the leading minds in AI, sharing their story, their success, and their advice. Focusing on fast-tracking you to the top, AI in Action cuts through the hype to help you kickstart your data science career. To listen to the latest AI in Action podcast, head over to www.aldis.com forward slash podcast, or subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or Google Podcasts. My guest in the show today is Carl McGlynn. Carl is the CEO of ServiceBot. ServiceBot transformed customer service conversations through messaging, AI, and automation. Over the course of the episode, Carl will speak about the inspiration for setting up ServiceBot, how ServiceBot can help boost your company's customer engagement, and some of the challenges they need to overcome to actually put the application to practice. Later, we'll talk about advice to CEOs on how to start applying AI in your business and the importance of able to strategize leveraging between humans and machines and how a thoughtful strategy around that. You're listening to the AI in Action podcast. I'm your host, Mark Kelly. Today's guest is Colin McGlynn from ServiceBot. So without further ado, let's get on to the show. Carl, very welcome to the show. Thanks, Mark. Carl, tell us a little bit about your background before you tell us a little bit more about ServiceBot. Sure. Well, I've been involved in startups for about the last uh, over 20 years, beginning with uh, my first company called Performance Technologies in 1998. And the most recent company that I founded was a company called Feed Henry, uh, which is a very successful mobile backend as a service company. We uh, spun out the technology out of the TSSG group down at Waterford Institute of Technology in 2000. And we grew one of the leading Node.js companies in the world. And we were acquired by Red Hat in the second half of 2014. So that was a big success and, you know, has led to sort of the development of ServiceBot as we see bots following mobile. Tell us a little bit about uh, ServiceBot and the, the problem and challenges that you had in probably starting off that adventure. But first of all, tell us about the problem you're trying to solve. So ServiceBot is a what we call a conversational AI platform, which is really designed to help allow companies to build natural language applications for their business. And that's really sort of following a trend that we see across the board where people are using more and more using natural language technologies to interact with IT systems. Sometimes they're often called chatbots, but that's only one element of it. If you look back over the last sort of 50, 60 years, every 10 years or so, we see a fundamental change in how people interact with technology. So in the 1960s, it was punch card. In the 1970s, it was green screen. In the 1980s, saw the invention of the the graphical user interface and mouse. In the 1990s, it became about the laptop. In the noughties, it became touch screen and mobile. And so what we're seeing now is a change towards using natural language as an interface to for people to compute. And if we look at things like Facebook Messenger and WeChat, we can see these you know, in abundance where once you're in that environment, they want to keep you in there and allow you to do everything in there, like order your pizza, book the tickets for the cinema, order an Uber. So that's really what the natural language sort of evolution is about. Yeah, it's also it's really important for you just to share it with the listener is is that somebody might have a term a terminology that they'd be comfortable using. So let's say you work. Uh, I used to work in car rental. So somebody might say uh, send me an email or a messenger to say is there a sat nav available with the purchase, or they might say sat navi, or they might say GPS GPS navigation. And depending on all the, all the different types of terminology you might use, it would be pretty difficult to actually understand. And if you can start to work out all the different terms that are used at any one point, then you can take a very narrow AI and actually kind of broaden it out to help do more different tasks that usually a person would have to interact with and engage with. So you're kind of feeding that information. So it's also very helpful for companies for sentiment analysis, where they're trying to understand if people are talking positively or negatively about their brand or how the news is spiking and what's what's particularly uh, of interest there too. Tell us a little bit about some of the applications of ServiceBot and how it can help businesses. Well, one of the things that we've, done uh, is we focused on other parts of the customer engagement and not just purely the customer service. Uh, The customer service area is something that almost everybody who's 
setting up chatbots wants to target because it's a natural. It's it's engaging with customers and trying to automate sort of solutions. We took a broader approach and we took the approach of this is actually about engaging using natural language. So this could be at any point in the in the customer life cycle. It could be on any type of device. So that means it could be on mobile or it could be within social media. It could be on your Alexa device or your Google Home device that you want to engage and find something out using a chat. In other words, using text or voice, right? Some sort of a chat script. And so what we do is we said, okay, let's look at things like, you know, use cases like onboarding a new customer, filling out an application form for a bank account or a dra- an overdraft or a loan, right? These are customer engagements that, you know, they perhaps go over a longer period of time. There's initial engagement where you fill it out, but then there's the follow-up. When is my loan approved? You know, what's the status of it? And so we took these kinds of processes and we sort of built AI bots that would actually allow users to interact with that that process, if you like, via a conversation. And instead of having the process business workflow determine the process, we let the conversation determine the process. So the customer can be very efficient and ask exactly for what they want and not have to go through the long process. Or we can use the AI to elicit the information from the customer if they don't know all of the details. So we've created a very flexible system that allows you to build customer engaging processes using natural language. Which is, is a really it's a very personalized approach. And if you look at Alexa, for example, all the different skills that are being added at any, at any one time now, it's it's really about what the customer wants. And, and voice by 2020, they're expected to be 1.8 billion people using devices of some sort. So it's a real move and focus in this area um, because it's just so much more, it's just so much, there's so much less friction when you're actually doing it versus you're on your phone or you're at your desktop PC and you're trying to get real estate for how you're actually engaging with uh, typing or, or text. And uh, for, for, from my experience, I can see this getting bigger and bigger. Even by 2020, uh, pretty much all cars are going to have Bluetooth uh, by them as well. So you mentioned onboarding for customers. It's also very important to have a consistent process and conversational uh, chatbots and just within AI, they can also have that consistency if they're done particularly well and you've got very specific tasks that you allow, allow them to do. Tell me about some of the challenges that you needed to overcome to come come up with what you have and the the impact of that because it's a pretty challenging problem to solve and it, on the outside it might, might look straightforward but it can get complicated very quickly. Well, I think the biggest challenge that you know we had is that um, enterprises have more difficult, you know, more stringent requirements, whether it be from security or just business complexity than ordinary consumer applications. So it's easy to, you know, create an Alexa scale that says, what's the weather or what time is it? Okay. It's a very simple process, a very simple sort of lookup. But when you sort of are in a business and you want to, let's say, um, you know, apply for a new loan, and the customer, for the, the AI has to, first of all, identify you. It has to find out who you are. It has to look up who you are to find out maybe what you're eligible for, right? So there's all these dependencies and complexities. And maybe all of the information it needs is held in two or three different systems at the back end. So it's not simply calling a one API and getting a response, like what time is it or what's the weather. It becomes a more complex thing about you know, looking up information to prime other questions and other sort of uh, decision trees that need to be made within the AI. So what we've done, uh, what we don't think anybody else has done, is we've we've made this sort of available for enterprises by uh, extracting, if you like, the business logic from the natural language logic. So we use the natural language purely to do intent detection, but actually we use more enterprise approach to fulfillment and to the enterprise integration patterns. So that was the first thing. I think the challenge. The second thing was how do you prime the pump without needing lots and lots and lots of data? And this is one of the one of the, if you like, somewhat misconception in certain areas where you need lots of data to sort of build a natural language model. We've taken a slightly different approach to say you need something to start with. Um, so you need to create a set of sample utterances around a specific area, but then you inject machine learning that can actually learn things over time. Like, as you said, 
different words for a sat nav, right? And because we're dealing with in very thin sliced AI, so if you're if you're working on a business process that's like an application or an onboarding, you're not going to add in all of the AI that can make it answer any random question under the sun, because the customer is not coming to that you know particular bot to, to ask what it's like, what what the economy of ta- the, you know Kazakhstan is when it's an application bot for a, a car credit card. So what that means is you can start with a narrowly focused objective, a small set of utterances, and then build in the machine learning that the the bot itself will learn over time by people asking it. And so that's a real winner for business because they don't need to churn large amounts of data. They don't need a lot of data science to actually get this up and running. They can get it up and running very quickly. And that kind of tied into my question where you might have businesses or CEOs or CTOs listening to this podcast and they're actually asking themselves the question, don't necessarily have a core team. I'd like to start to see applications and implications and improve our ROI, either improve customer experience, maybe redeploy some of our employees to do more higher value tasks. What advice would you offer to people who wanted to avail of this product? Pick a particular use case. This this is a great approach to digital transformation because you're starting to transform you know, the very front end, the interaction with the customer. And so if you think about what you want to transform and create new ways of doing business, pick one area that you say, hey, I wouldn't mind if we did a better job of this with our customers, whether it be applications or loans or frequently asked questions or a particular business transaction. Start with that. That's a simple, what we call a use case, an individual use case. You know, figure out what your ROI is, what you want to get out of this by means of, better conversion rates or more automated handling, figure out what the what the ROI is, and then just start with that one use case. Don't worry about you know, all the complexities of the AI or the data sets. That's all taken care of for you by the platform. Just work on a business process, a transaction, a business outcome that you would like to see a customer engage with using this natural language interface. Figure that out and the rest becomes easy. And once you've had your first success, that then you can go on and build on top of that. How important is it for a company to have a strategy with their people, how they can actually leverage the products like yourself and also having a strategy to take into consideration that add the extra valuable work that people can now do where some tasks are going to be automated and provide a, a probably more consistent service for allowing the humans to might be a more customer-focused so uh, service? Good question. Um, I always use the analogy uh, about bank ATMs coming in, you know, in the late 60s and 70s, right, where people said, oh, my goodness, that's going to eliminate bank tellers and we're going to see the end of bank tellers. And what actually happened over the next 30 years, and there was a survey done, is that what happened was the service improved. It allowed banks to open up and deliver a better service uh, by putting ATMs in every corner. So now you had a bank in every corner rather than just one branch. I think the same can happen here where it's not about necessarily replacing people. It's about providing better services for your customers. And that in itself generates a return by higher sales, you know, lower churn, and so on. So I think the way to look at this is what's the business goal out of all of this, right? And if you take that approach, then you figure out how to combine the experience of humans um, with the experience that you want to give your customers. So does it make sense to have people answer random questions that you could automate through self-service or does it make more sense to have those people focus on the higher value add activities that could be happening and the more complex issues and so we don't see you know we certainly don't see in the next couple of years a an automation only scenario we see this as being automate the simple things automate the, the repetitive things you know and then use sort of humans to actually improve that learning and knowledge and train the system but also to handle, always have an exception that you can hand over to a human when you need to. We've already seen AI and machine learning make a big impact on businesses and their customer relationships. Where do you see the customer experience heading in the next two to three years? Well, that's back to the point I made earlier, which is I think there's a massive transition going on from, you know, using applications with features and drop down menus and to actually just using natural language. I think the the days of going to an app store and trying to find a particular app are gone. I think we'll have a couple of big sort of generic chat apps like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger, but also some business apps, right, where you would be able to avail of lots of services from within. So there's no reason why if you're in a particular app at your bank, 
that you couldn't ask about other related services like mortgages and credit card statements and things that are maybe not directly served by the bank, but are somewhat related, interest rates, foreign exchange. So these are things that you could all do from within the one environment once you're in there. You're listening to the AI in Action podcast. Our guest today is Carl McLone. Carl is the CEO of ServiceBot. Carl, thank you very much for your time today. Thanks, Mark. AI in Action is brought to you by Aulus International, covering your business's staffing, consulting, and networking needs. Aulus offer an exec search program. Aulus can help you discover how data science and AI can transform your company. With our unrivaled network of C-suite executives and senior AI professionals, we offer retained search services across the US and Europe. For more information, contact mark at aldus.com. Get the Aldus advantage. Become a member of the Aldus community and enjoy some of the following. AI meetups. Once a month, our community gathers to listen to some of the leading experts in the world of data science and AI. Our speakers come from all over the world, including Dublin, Boston, and Frankfurt. We also have our AI mentors. Our experts will provide mentoring to all us members. And don't forget our AI in Action podcast. Each week we have guests from all over the world talking us through their education, career and more. Become an Aldus member and get the Aldus advantage. For more information and to sign up for our newsletter, log on to www.aldus.com. That's www.aldus.com. Aldus International, empowering through AI.